Hello, in this A-Frame Web VR tutorial, we're going to be looking at interacting with objects. If you look at the result from the previous tutorial, this is what happens. By default, if I just reload the page, it starts rotating the cube, that's fine. But what we're gonna make it do is when we click the cube, it'll rotate, so it won't rotate automatically. And this is a great gateway into doing various other stuff, because once you know how to interact with various objects, you can define separate animation for them, make them do different things. And I would recommend doing that once you've learned this, add several objects, make them all clickable, make them move to, make them move around. And once you've got the headset on, as long as you have a headset that allows you to press the screen with a button, pretty much all of them do, you should be all good to go. And with a headset, oh, like I've said in most of these videos in this series, it's fantastic. Just get a headset if you don't have one. Okay, dokie. So the first thing we are going to do is have another attribute for the animation called begin. I'm going to say equals when we click on it and repeat indefinite is fine. The two animation is fine. So if we save this, go back to our web browser, refresh. It's not beginning, but it's like, how do we click on it? Because when you actually click, it just clicks on the center. But it's not actually doing anything because we don't have a cursor. So what we're going to do now is add a cursor. So to do that, if we go to after the box, I'm going to set up a camera. So a dash camera position equals zero seven and five the position of a camera you will probably obviously have to experiment with it depending on what's in your world but that's all the fun of learning in here you just put another a element which is cursor and the color set the color to something i'm just going to put ff 0, 0, 0, 0. you've got to put a hash first sorry and this is just going to be red so if i just close this tag i'll save it go back refresh we have a red tag but nothing is oh there it is so as you can see i'm technically over it now but if i go above it like here click nothing happens if i go onto it click ooh, there, oh there we go that was weird why that didn't happen let's have a look at it again let's go down actually up i guess ooh, ah, keep keep clicking on it <laughs> Oh yeah, that's fine. I don't know why it didn't work before, but there you go. We have it working now. Another way that you can essentially do this is using an event. So if we go to the box right here, I'm going to leave the previous animation as is because it looked quite freaky and cool. So if you put a dash event name equals mouse enter and then put a scale, so I'm going to scale it to 4, 1 and 6 in the x, y and z axis, let's close that tag off, refresh, now as you can see when we actually just enter it, I haven't clicked yet because it hasn't started rotating but in mouse enter it scaled it so we can click it and it does our rotation, so that's another way that we can do it, another way we can essentially do this is use, using vanilla javascript i will show you that method but preferably use the a-frame built-in methods elements it's just better to use their stuff so i'm just going to comment this out just for the purpose of learning i'll show you so at the bottom here just before the closing script body tag i'm going to add a script tag and in here we're going to do box dot add event listener and in here the event listener is mouse enter now we're going to do a function but the beauty of doing it this way is you could do other stuff on enter with this is quite restrictive but with this, you could be doing a bunch of other JavaScript that you, maybe you're, you're doing some sort of Ajax call and you're calling a database, getting data back, displaying data. There's a bunch of stuff you can do. So this method has its merits. If you're doing something simple, use a built-in event, mouse center method or 
any A event, but if you want something a bit more complex, this is a great way as well. So don't rule it out. It totally does depend on the scenario that you're coding for. So let's just sort this stuff out. And in here, you just do box.set attribute to scale. So because that is what we're affecting. But you could easily change the position as well. And I recommend trying that out as well. I recommend actually, once we've done this video, because I'm essentially just going to replicate this here. Uh, what I want you to do is using this script method, set change several attributes. So only have one mouse enter event listener, but change the scale, change the position, the rotation, maybe even try and change the texture. If you can do that, that will be fantastic. So let's get back to it. So what we want to do is put a comma and in here, put curly braces, put a comma here, and all we're going to do is put x colon, then the value. What I'm going to actually put is 0 0.5 so we can see a distinction just to make sure it has it is using the new code. And for the y, we're going to put 2, and for the z value, put 5.9. Why not? Save that. Go back to our web browser refresh scroll down looking forward to see what this looks like okay so that didn't work so let's have a look at the console I see some sort of error in the console box is not defined so ah <laughs> I forgot to create a variable so var my bad my bad var box equals document you could obviously be using javascript if you wanted to i mean jquery if you wanted to to, to make life easy and i recommend that try adding a J, jquery in and try using that as well mixture of just vanilla javascript and jquery so document dot query selector and for this we're just gonna put the element name because there's only one element but you'll probably want to do something like hash the box ID or dot the box class, something like that. Because when you have a lot of objects on the screen, you'll probably have several boxes, several toruses, etc. etc. Et It'd be a great way of distinguishing between them. And I recommend doing that as an extra task as well. Try adding an ID to the box and using the ID here instead. Let's go back, refresh. We've got no errors, which is always a good sign. Scroll. Boom. So there we go, doesn't look very nice, but it has scaled indeed. And we clicked on it and now it is rotating crazy style. So that's it for interacting with objects. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our education platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There will be a link in the description, plus another link in the description to the source code from this video and the source code from every other video in this series. If you like the video, please let let us know in the comments, hit that subscribe button and leave us a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave us a comment as well, I'm sure you will, so we can improve for the next time. And as usual, thank you for watching and happy interacting with objects.